Hello, Abraham. I see you are on twice. Yeah, Dr. McKenzie. Um, and the reason is because uh, I usually connect on a tablet. Oh, but it is creating a big feedback. Yeah, so I will have to shut that one. I was just uh, testing to see if I could uh, present. So which one do you want to close? Yeah, I'm going to close down the tablet because I can't present on it. Okay, good. All righty. And let us just go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for what we have already accomplished. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for that which you will continue to do in and through us. Okay. We pray for your students who you are equipping and tooling to do your work. Mm -hmm. And we pray that even as they present, you will give us clarity. Mm -hmm we will know without a doubt that you are directing our path. Mm -hmm. Hear us, we pray. Mm -hmm. Bring the others in soon. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we had some beautiful presentations this morning. It was really touching to see um, persons seeing their path and their work and worth. And now it's your time, Abraham. We don't expect yours to be any less. Um, yeah. You're going to hit the share button. You should have your PowerPoint presentation on your desktop. Yes. And then when you hit the share button, you will just select the PowerPoint. And are you seeing the share button? Yes. I can right, see so you will just hit the your PowerPoint and we should be able to begin. Okay. Dr. Etaj has been my faithful companion and he will assist me to give you feedback as we listen intently to your you casting your vision, all right? All right. Thank you. So um let me share. Um, Can you see? Yes, we are seeing very well. All right. Okay, so. Welcome, yeah. Jill. Hello. Okay. Go All ahead, right. Abram. Okay, so uh, it's uh, my personal assessment presentation. And um, the Chapter one talks about the book reviews, and uh, here I highlighted the the, uh, the books that we have already. I still have uh, some other books to add to make up the number of pages, but uh, what I've highlighted here is uh, uh, the uh, recommended books, and then I have the number of pages, I guess, um, this is just to indicate uh, uh, which books uh, will be forming part of the book reviews for chapter one. And then uh, going to uh, chapter two, which talks about my calling and life vision. And then talk a bit, um, about discovering my calling, uh, my calling as a pastor and uh, as a motivator. Uh, I happen to um, get into uh, pastoring um, a few years ago, maybe like uh, 12 years ago now, I have actually been running away from pastoring before then. I had run away from pastoring for well over 10, 15 years until uh, God caught up with me and then um, went into pastoring. And I just discovered based on uh, my experience is that that's exactly where God wants me to be all along. 
So my calling as a pastor, as a motivator, what's my life vision? I think I'm called to the youths and teenagers. I want to see uh, our youths and teenagers reach their full potential. I want to see youths and teenagers being led to Christ and grow. And I also feel this sense of fulfillment um, when I see a youth or a teenager in the raw form, no life uh, direction, maybe street kid, maybe just, you know, living a life without any purpose. And I see these uh, people, maybe by, by interaction with them, come to Christ. And then I see them growing in Christ. And I see some even becoming uh, youth leaders. So that gives me a great fulfillment. So I see that as a vision. So I want to see more of these young people come to Christ and start doing great things for Christ. And then I go into my 5H experience. And uh, here I'm going to um, you know, talk a little bit about each of that, but I'm going to zero in on the hand of God. The hand of God uh, in my H experience really, really talks about uh, my own personal experience in terms of how I see myself running away from exactly what I think uh, now, I know God has called me to do, right? I try to avoid that because I yet never felt like I wanted anything to do with pastoring. And I see how God in his uh, you know, various ways of uh, directing my life pattern, you know, ended up uh, becoming a pastor. And I see again what God has done uh, in my life through those years. So. I see the hand of God in terms of uh, the um, personal experience. I mean, just becoming obvious that if I was to choose my own path, I probably would not choose uh, the path I'm in now, but I see God's um, invisible hand directing me in there. So I see the hand of God. Lord, then talk a little bit about my giftedness, uh, my life experience, what I think my giftedness is, where I think uh, God is uh, leading me to in the future. And then uh, go on to chapter three, which talks about communication. And program of reaching out to youths and teenagers as my main focus in ministry. So again, uh, over the years, I have uh, come to realize that my main focus in ministry, where God is directing me to, where my heart really go, uh, stays on is to young people. I want to uh, see young people receiving Christ, Christ being preached to them as the ultimate solution provider. I see a lot of uh, issues around young people, a lot of uh, misdirection and uh, lack of vision, but preaching Christ to them as the ultimate solution provider, meeting educational needs, you know, so many dropouts around me, uh, helping people to get back to school, meeting financial needs, linking people that are just completely jobless, link, linking them to employment opportunities, and generally focusing on the welfare and well being of young people. And then going to attracting and mentoring young people, reaching out to young people through other young people. Again, and I've also discovered that. Uh, Young people can relate better with uh, their age mate, their age mates. So, reaching young people through other young people. So, we take a few, mentor them, and then use those to reach out to uh, other young people. And we have seen that that works a lot. That's uh, actually one of the things we are uh, currently involved in. And uh, how do I attract and mentor young people? Currently, I devote time, devote time to counseling, devote time to discipleship, devote time to just listening to them and helping them to locate their calling. I think that a lot of young people have uh, potentials, but they need to be helped to really understand and locate what exactly God is calling them to do. And then um, go on, going on to uh, uh, current ministry. Area of current ministry is a pastor, is a preacher, 
It's an evangelist, an organizer. I see myself as an organizer, organize uh, events, all still around young people and church events, encourager, teacher, motivator, counselor, and leader. And I think everything is um, involved in terms of um, just pastoring the church. You've got to be sometimes the messenger, sometimes the leader, sometimes the visioner, sometimes the organizer, and various people need various things. So pastor has to be those things to whoever, to those, I mean, be answered to those needs. So wherever people are coming from, there must be um, uh, that aspect of the pastor that can meet people with various needs. So again, my area of current ministry, I think it cuts across this, uh, stemming from being a pastor. And uh, relationships, so I talk about uh, ministry mentors, uh, named a few people that have been, um, that have looked up to in ministry. Uh, Reverend Felix Medoye is a general overseer of First Coast Gospel Church in Nigeria. I also mentioned that Pastor Enoch Adeboye, who is also general overseer of uh, the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Nigeria. And then I have some other men of God that I've related with over time, Reverend Victor Akpan, Paul Father Enyal, then um, talk a little bit about uh, those aspects of my relationship with them and how I think uh, the, rel the relationship have impacted me in ministry. And then um, talk about uh, colleagues, friends, and family. I have uh, Dr. Kolade Adeyemi, who is actually one of my PLC. We've known for over 20 years, we were classmates in the university, and he's been a ministry partner, a, a serious friend, and somebody that uh, has been a prayer partner. I also have uh, Dr. Fumi. Dr. Fumi is my co-pastor and my spouse, and those are you know, relationships that I think has helped me to get the work going over the years. And I also have uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, sorry, Pastor Jones. Pastor Jones is uh, a fellow pastor and encourager, one of my great friends. So, and then talk about church community, my immediate constituency and circle of uh, influence, my immediate uh, community. Uh, those are various relationships I've had, you know, in, uh, that uh, has enhanced my ministry. And then, um, Chapter six talks about spiritual formation. Uh, areas needing growth. Uh, I know I need to develop a stronger faith in God. I need to develop uh, courage to obey God's instructions. Even when I don't understand it, say, uh, again, I think over my experience, there are so many things that uh, God says that uh, I just don't understand. And then it becomes difficult to obey. So better understanding the ways of God and uh, just plainly wanting to uh, obey. So those are areas I think that uh, my spiritual formation is still coming together. Those are areas I think I still need to work on. And then preparation for increased level of influence, understand my giftedness, understand my style of the flesh, focus on godly character, and uh, areas I believe that uh, I need to uh, preparation for increased level of influence. I just need to work on these areas. And then chapter seven leads me to chapter seven is uh, the last chapter talking about my academic plan. Um, this is my first course. So I still have uh, so many courses to, to take. I'm thinking about um, transformational leadership, servant leadership, uh, uh, overture. And then uh, I have a few ideas around uh, what I intend to do for my final projects. So that's, uh, that in a nutshell is uh, the outline of uh, my presentation. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you for taking us into your your life a little and into your journey through this course uh, 
I want to ask Dave to, to, to come in first to give his feedback. Dr. Dave, what are your thoughts on what you've heard from Abraham? Any que question and so on? I'm going to see how my, actually my video is not holding up. I'll just turn yes. my video off again. <laughs> yes, okay. Oh, it I'm is back. now. Oh, now uh, it will do the thingy, but you can stay on <laughs> if you feel better. Right. Abraham, very, very good job. I, I appreciate the the uh, the journey. Um, I would like to know a little bit more of of those years where you felt that God was. Um, how did you put it? Where you felt you were God had to pull you back to your calling. Um, what, what happened in those years? Okay, um, you know, I had always felt like very early on in my life that uh, God wanted me to be a pastor. But I had also, um, for about 10 to 15 years, I have, I have deliberately, you know, you know, run away from such a situation. In fact, there was a situation, there was a time I was in a particular church and uh, they were going to anoint pastors. And uh, I know that my name was coming up, and that's when I stopped going to that church and joined another church just to avoid that responsibility. <laughs> and, you know, I had always, and in my mind, I felt like, no, this is a, a, too big a responsibility. I just, uh, I just can't do it. So I had so seen myself over, over time. I just discovered that when it looks like the responsibility is coming and it looks like I'm going to be, you know, maybe anointed pastor and uh, even more responsibility, I just, you know, deliberately and quietly stay back and just yeah. uh, quietly move away. I just feel that, oh, this type of responsibility is too heavy for me. So right. I had noticed that over my life. I think uh, in my life, I had seen that for like 10 to 15 years. Yeah. Before I eventually was uh, uh, succumbed and became a pastor, um, just about uh, twelve years ago. And what and what were you what were you doing for for those ten to fifteen years? Were you working? Were you? What, yeah, what? I was. I was. Yeah, I was working. Even now, I'm still working. Uh, I was working and then very active in church. You know, again, how it works is you. I was. I was working. I had. I had a day job. And doing and I, what? What was your day jobs? My day job, I, I, my background, I studied accounting. So I worked as an accountant in a company. Okay. But, again, but, but again, I feel that I have a love for God. So when I'm in a church setting, I also am somebody that's, you know, put a lot of commitment into it and a lot of energy into it. I just want to serve God. But then when it now gets into a situation when I'm discovering that I'm being identified as, oh, this person looks like we can give him more responsibility than I chicken out. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, yeah. Reason I, the reason I asked the question, because I know this is your first course, is yes. that as we talked in the class, there are so many life experiences that God uses. Even when we think we're running away from God, he's yeah. still going to use those experiences. And as we talked last week, he's building that container of yeah. what our life purpose would be. So I guess two, two things. One, I would encourage you to possibly take the theology of work class okay. um, that, that Dr. Peabody teaches, because you may look at those 10 to 15 years as, as uh, you didn't use the term wasted years, but years that you felt like you were just doing accounting. But I think those years probably ha you learned a lot of lessons and a lot of experiences that you could really use to reach the youth and to, to, to minister to them in ways that you probably don't even realize. So I think in the, in the paper, I would, and, and Yvonne, you can, you can dispute this if you want, but I think those are some times that I, I should probably be, be explored a little bit within the paper because that's part of your journey. And I, I almost guarantee that, that you've gained some experiences that are going to really be meaningful to the youth that you want to reach. Right. So. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for the feedback. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, 
how did your life map reveal yeah. how you were being shaped during those times? Did yeah, you it's, find it's, evidence in your life map that showed that you were being prepared during those times? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, again, it shows. And all that um, 10 to 15 years, like mentioned, uh, I, it wasn't just I do. It's just that I believe that what God wanted me to do is work as an accountant, but also as a pastor. And I was like, avoiding being a pastor just concentrate on being an accountant because i didn't think that i can combine both mm. so again i felt like oh i'm too uh, uh it to be too much uh wait i don't want to uh be um i don't want to drop the ball uh, i don't want yeah. to be taking the two responsibilities and not be able to fulfill one any anyone uh, very well that was my thinking all that period. So again, it shows off that. And then I discovered that uh, um, when I eventually uh, became a pastor, the grace was available. I thought that, oh, it would be too much work. I can't combine these two, but discover that when God is involved, you just find it so easy. So again, that's a lesson that I, I can pick out very, very well that you know, I just discovered that it wasn't a big deal at all. God gives the grace. I could still work very well as an accountant and still function very well as a pastor and I'm doing both and nothing is falling apart. How is your accounting helping you in your function as a pastor? Oh, very well, very well. Because again, That's in my, in my, uh, in my, uh, in my function as a pastor now, uh, because I belong to the denomination where we have to report, we report the uh, finances, report the spiritual work. I find all that very easy. I see a lot of pastors struggle with uh, those figures and how to put things together. Those are not uh, any issue for me at all. And I believe that it's not because of my accounting background. You said you had to work on your spiritual formation. What plans do you have? How do you see yourself filling those gaps that you have identified? Okay. Um, I think that um, I'm, I'm not there yet. I think that I can believe God for more. I believe that um, I'm not, I've not reached my potential yet. There's a lot much more that God wants me to do. And that is the aspect I'm looking at it from. I'm looking at it from aspects of, you know, there is so much more that God wants to do through me. So again, how do I work on that? I believe that I need to um, probably, uh, you know, depend on God more, maybe talk to mentors more, look at uh, people's uh, lives more that I look up to and just, you know, become, a better steward, you know, that uh, God wants me to be. So I, I, I just think that there is a lot much more to learn, and uh, I'm willing to to learn to learn. I, I, I think the more, you know, the more I think about it, the more I believe that you know, I'm not there yet at all. Especially when I think, when I look, when I look at uh, mentors, people ahead of me, and I think, oh. See how much more these ones are doing for God. See how much more the uh, God is able to use them. The more I feel that I need to surrender myself more to God. So again, those are aspects I believe that I still have much more work to do. Dr. Smith placed an emphasis on our understanding of God's nature which counters working to please God, but more understanding who God is to us so that we, we shift our focus from the more and the doing to the recognizing of 
all that he is to us. Um, I don't know how much you have wrestled with that approach because we're coming out of a culture where we need to work for God. And the more we work and the more we speak about our devotion and the more we manifest elements of the spirit, the more we are convinced we're um, developing along the continuum of spiritual formation. But he dared to suggest that that um, pulling and pressing and uh, mirroring um, I am the greatest worker for God could also be the thing that pulls us furthest away from God because we are not aware that God is who he is to us mm. unconditionally. Um, yeah. as, you, as you read and explore that more, I would love to see you define what spiritual formation means to you and, and, and probably um, your emphasis may change as you wrestle with those things, right? Um, yeah. Persons sometimes think that this makes it too easy. Does it mean I don't have to do anything? And um, there's a thin line you thread there, but um, we need to escape the thought that the more I can show that I am all of this is the more spiritually developed I am. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Understanding God's nature and who he is to us is something we struggle to do. The enemy would want us feel that we qualify by some means mm -hmm. and um, we use grace as it, in a different context. Okay. You know? So yeah. just a suggestion. Okay. Gia and uh, Florine have been listening to you and may well want to say something to you by way of encouragement or questions. Gia, Florine, you've heard Abraham. Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't have anything, Dr. Yvonne. I kind of was leaning uh, toward what you were just saying about the doing versus the being, you mm -hmm. know, and getting, I mean, I struggle with that as well. So I just wanted to kind of echo that, you know, we can get so caught up in doing for God that we miss just being a daughter or a son, you know, mm -hmm. and that we don't have to do anything, <laughs> you know, yeah. his love and, and, and his, um, you know, to be. <laughs> who he loves and who he, who he uses ultimately, although we do have, you know, a certain standard of living. Um, but yeah, that was just my thoughts as well as I was yeah. listening. Um, Abraham, not to overemphasize it, but I wonder what life would be like if one week you didn't go to church, you didn't preach, you <laughs> didn't do any work for God, you just laid on your couch for a week. Would you feel removed from him? Because I, you didn't read any Bible study. You didn't do anything. You just sat. You probably would think you're not even in his presence, but you're just there. Um, and is he the God who would run away from you during that time because you were not being and doing? and you were lazy and you were condemned or would he be the god who say come a while and rest i'm loving you i am caring for you and i want you to have this respect just think of me mm -hmm. just rest in me is he that god for you or is he the God who is saying you, as long as you're not sleeping, you must be up doing something for me? I, I think that uh, he's a, such a loving God. He will meet you at your point of need. But I certainly think that um, for me personally, I will feel unfulfilled. I want to, I, I, I think that I get fulfillment from just being there in his presence you know, doing something. I think that uh, 
how we personally feel, like what's going on, what's happening, what's happening with me. Right. But, uh, but, but for him, I think that uh, whatever it is, he's such a loving God. He's not going to say, oh, you're no longer my child because you're not there. He, he is such a loving God. But uh, on, uh, that's from his side. But from my side, I think that uh, I will not be fulfilled. As long as, as long as that lack of fulfillment is not in your head as something you were doing to get closer to him. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Because yes. um, you can be wired to not still sit still. Mm. Right? Um, but I, I, I tend to work backwards. And I have in my culture persons who will not come to the communion table because they felt that during this period they, they were separated from God. They had sinned. And so... You know when your, your church community members decide I'm not taking communion because I really want to curse somebody and I curse them. So I'm not taking communion, right? Right. And, and they don't. But mm. here is the thought that bothers me. When they do take communion, what are their thoughts? I am perfect in Christ. Because there's, an, uh, 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 there's another side to the story. Because if you right. think you are not right, so you don't come, it means that when you come, you think you are right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that and, could and be dangerous, couldn't it? it because is. You, are, you are always. Mm -hmm. In right? so, uh, and that is the point I'm making, but we don't want to spend too much time on that because we do have other presenters, but just want to encourage you. I can really see the trajectory. I can see that the course for you did its job in having you think through in a sequential way where yeah. you're at and where you want to go. Um, and you are in your ministry. And I guess when it comes to um, the calling within the calling, mm -hmm. right? Because your dissertation will not be focused on I'm a pastor, but it will be focused of what particular aspect of your pastoral meet, um, service, in your case, the young people, mm -hmm. and how you're going to define and refine that identifying the problems that you want to address okay. identifying how you will address them and identifying how you will know when they're addressed okay all right so yeah. that goes for your dissertation and so you're laying the track and you okay. you're actively thinking in your mind i have come to a place where I am convinced I want to move in this direction. Okay. All right. So within your ministry, there is a specific ministry. Right. Right. And yeah. you will own that as you move on. And when we meet with your PLC, the midnight call, um, mm -hmm. we will talk some more about that. All right. All right. Okay, then. Who Thank will so come much. next? Who wants to come next? Florine, you or oh, Jay saying yes? Okay, Jay, go ahead. I'm on my iPad, so I'm going to see if this sharing works. So Yeah, just make sure that your PowerPoint is already up on your screen. Okay. So that when you hit share, you can select it. Okay. Did it do anything? No. Let's see. Okay. There is a share button at the bottom of your screen, right? Can you see that? But your iPod may be at the top. I'm not sure. Yeah, I see share content, but I'm just trying to figure out. Let me see if I can. All right. When, when you hit share, you will then see your desktop coming all up 
So you will select your PowerPoint from the desktop. Okay, I think I may have it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm clicking share. Let's see. Yes, we do have it. Great. But it's not doing it like, I guess I can do it this way. Um, if you do a full screen for your PowerPoint, then we probably will have it better. Right. Um, we'll, we'll take it like that. You will have to move it. Okay. One I'll PowerPoint move. at a time. Okay. But, no? but go back to your larger screen. Okay. So I'm twisting it. Okay. Is that better? Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, well, this is my... Um, final report presentation. Please go easy on me <laughs> as I walk through this. Um, and as I listened to Abraham, I saw some things that I want to add in that I forgot. So I'll make note of that. Um, so chapter one is, um, again, the book reviews, um, the eight that I have um, since I'm doing an eight credit course. Um, and these are all the books um, that I have read. Um, and will and have almost finished doing the book reviews on um and all of them i think were um, impactful and were helpful in me being able to identify um not identify my call but really support the work um, that i wish to do um and also just to um give me greater insight into my own personal relationship with with god um, my own formation as well as um my calling and, and the work that i want to do um, so that'll be chapter one. Chapter two is the calling, um, my calling in my life. Um, and in this chapter, I would describe my calling as a prophet, a teacher, and a healer, um, and how I plan to use my giftedness, temperament, um, spiritual gifts, and professional experience um, to make an impact in the world. Um, I will also describe the specific areas that I wish to transform. Um, and, and again, I'm still not really sure as to you know what i'll exactly be researching but this is just to give you some ideas of the things that really um ignite fire in me when i think about them and the things that um i would be interested in, in doing more work in and so the first one is um, emotional health promotion in the african-american church um, and i know that these are broad um, i'm not gonna hear dr yvonne saying that <laughs> And so we'll, we'll narrow it down. Um, I also am passionate about empowerment of female church leadership um, and also purpose coaching. Um, because in my, um, when we talked about giftedness um, and we had the conversation with Bill, um, I expressed that it's really my passion to help others. Well, it really first and foremost makes me sad that we have you know, believers who believe in God, but really don't connect with purpose. Um, or don't feel like they have purpose or don't know how to discover it. So I, I am really, um, that's an area as well that I'm really passionate about and, and would like to be able to assist in some way. Um, and in the calling in life, I did leave out the five H's. So I want to thank Abraham for uh, bringing that back to my remembrance. But I'll also talk about the five H's in this, in this chapter um, and with specific em emphasis on hardships um, and the hand of God, because I think that those two uh, were really key for me in shaping um, and who I am today and where I'm going um, in my ministry. And I'll um, conclude this chapter by discussing my core values. Um, I have core, four or five core values that I kind of guide my life. Um, and so I have like this, um, this diagram that I created long before coming to BT, uh, BGU. Uh, but they really guide kind of all that I do. And those values being serving others, personal growth, uh, healthy relationships. Um, so that includes family and friends, prosperity, not just, you know, financial prosperity, but health, wealth, you know, every kind of, you know, our souls prospering, um, just as our spirits prospering according to the word, and also self-care. So those are kind of the, the guiding principles or guiding values of my life. And so I want to talk a little bit more um, about that as it defines kind of my life and calling as well. Um, and so chapter three um, is about communication. So really discussing my um, sphere of influence, both in ministry and professionally. Um, ministry being an, an ordained elder and preacher. Um, but also being a professional um, 
clinical social workers or having an, an experience, having experience as a therapist um, and also doing a lot of trauma um, healing type work. Um, and so really talking about my current sphere of influence, which again, I've already been doing some work as in preaching, teaching, um, doing uh, sessions and, and things like that um, in church and my own um, nonprofit. So I'll just talk a little bit you know, more about that as well as um, I do have a blog where I discuss a lot of emotional wellness and emotional health type topics um, specifically for Christians. Um, and also I have a big social media presence. That's a huge way that I kind of encourage people um, and have a lot of followers. And so I wanted to also acknowledge that and then future activities. And so I hope um, that my, uh, as I matriculate through the DTL program, um, that at the end of this, I'm able to write a book, which I'm working on, but I want to finish up as well as a leadership curriculum on emotional health. Um, I want to expand my ability to conduct in-person events and virtual classes on emotional health and women's empowerment. Um, and also, you know, expand my uh, nonprofit, which I'll talk a little bit more about in my ministry section, um, launch, um, and also launch my coaching and consulting um, and public speaking business. So that is something that I wish to do in the future that it is not, um, I'm not working in right now, but wish to kind of move in that direction as far as what I do full time. So my current ministry, and these are just some pictures to kind of guide along <laughs> with our discussion, um, but my current ministry, um, in this section, I'll, uh, in this chapter, I'm gonna talk more about my, uh, the history and vision and mission of my ministry um, and also my nonprofit organization, which is the Gift of Truth, um, which um, I've been, um, I've had for the past two and a half years. It started as a blog, just encouraging believers um, and women and, and all that good stuff. And it just has grown, um, but it's still very much in its formative state. And so I really wanna be able to grow it um, and build upon what I've already started. And I will also use this chapter to discuss um, my ministry and professional work um, which will also support my calling. And so I am one um, who I don't see the separation between secular and sacred. And I know that that was something that was spoken of consistently in our literature um, and, and what we've read, both in giftedness um, and I believe in emotionally healthy spirituality. Both of those books talked a lot about, you know, that um, dichotomy not really existing. And I kind of lean toward that because I see my work as a social worker and helping other people. Um, and my ministry as all being glorified to God. Um, and so I don't really have that dichotomy. So I want to talk about really how I use all of it um, really as ministry, even though I talk about ministry and professional. Um, and then in this section about current ministry, I will also discuss my plans to become a full-time coach, consultant, and professional speaker. And so I do work a traditional job, but it is my desire and my heart's desire to be able to ultimately move into entrepreneurship where I'm able to preach, I'm able to teach and encourage and consult with churches around emotional health and how to um, build the capacity of pastors in this area. And so um, I'm not at a place to do that right now, um, but it is definitely something that I wish to do um, and is on my heart to do and something that I believe that I'm called to do, um, most importantly. So I will talk a little bit more about that transition and what I want that to look like. Um, chapter five is about relationship. And I know that relationship is everything. Um, and so this section is, is set, this chapter is really important. Um, and in this section, I'm gonna focus on the relationships that I've had up until this point that has helped me to really reach, um, you know, where I am today, my pastor, um, you know, uh, friendships um, that have supported me. Um, I have not had a whole lot of mentorship um, other than having a spiritual leader, um, but it, mentorship is something that I do desire. And so I will talk about that as in, you know, the relationship that I need to develop um, in order to build my capacity and sphere of influence. And also just being able to connect with people um, who are entrepreneurs and who do the work that I desire to do as far as public speaking um, and such. And so those are relationships that I'm going to talk about that I need to develop. But most importantly in this section, I want to discuss, you know, my family being my first calling. Um, and so I thought it was more appropriate to address that in this section versus my calling section, um, because I think sometimes we can focus so much on what God 
um, you know, our calling to other people that we lose sight of our families. And so as a wife and as a mother of two um, beautiful boys, um, I have to remain sober <laughs> in the fact that they are my first calling and that, you know, I'm their mother um, first and I'm my husband's wife first before I'm an elder, before I'm a preacher or anything. Um, I need to minister to them. And so balance is a huge thing for me, both as a, as a woman. I think that balance um, is something that we talk a lot about or think a lot um, about more than I think men do. Um, and so I'm still figuring the balance out. And so I want to talk about how that has been a challenge. Um, but it's definitely something that I acknowledge is an important relationship. And I am one. I've seen a lot of families destroyed um, because we pursued, again, external callings and, and trying to please God. Um, but we lost the connection with our families. And so I do not want that to happen. So I do want to um, also expand and expound upon that in that section. Um, chapter six is about spiritual formation. Um, and like Abraham, I'm talking about the areas, um, you know, where I have my, um, my areas of growth. And I'm currently finishing up the book um, on integrity um, by Dr. I believe his last name is Cloud. And it's amazing um, because it really, um, you know, pricked my heart and is showing me how, it, how as much as I think I have integrity, there's still so much growth um, that is needed in that area. And that integrity is not just about being honest, but it's about everything that we do. It's about how we view people. It's about how we treat people. Um, it's about, you know, our work. It's about everything. And so um, I'm really, um, really excited to finish that book and, and, and also to, to do my own personal work. And so in this chapter, I'm going to talk about um, my journey of spiritual formation, as well as the areas that I need to continue to grow in and those areas of bulleted um, trusting God as a father. So Dr. Yvonne, that speaks to, you know, my personal relationship and, and really moving. I'm in a, a personal space of moving from seeing myself as a vessel to be used um moving from that into really seeing myself as a daughter who is a love and that is really the mental shift that i'm having to take personally um after being you know walking with god for 17 years i am just getting to that place um of making that distinction um because i was brought up you know under the the idea that you had to work for god um in order to please him even though we didn't say that that was kind of what was what what i got from it from my teaching and so I'm renewing my mind around this and, and God is helping me and teaching me, you know, that I can just be a daughter and that's enough. Um, and so as much as I'm called and I have an anointing on my life, um, that my first, you know, uh, calling is to be a daughter um, in addition to being um, a wife and a mother. And so learning how to trust him as father and as a fatherless daughter um, in the natural sense, not having my natural father, there are uh, wounds there. Um, that I've, you know, began to deal with in my life. And so that has, and then I'm seeing the links between my relationship or the, the non-existent relationship with my natural father and how I relate to God. And so I'm really doing, again, hard work in, in, in reconciling that and seeing God as father and really trusting him as that. Some other areas include strengthening my level of spiritual discipline, so although I'm, I don't believe that we are under law and I, I don't, you know, believe that, you know, in a legalistic kind of view of God, I do believe that spiritual discipline is imperative. Um, and I believe in, um, in uh, Henry Nowen's book, uh, The Call, uh, He Makes All Things New. He talks, he has a quote in there that says, um, you know, that there's no way to basically live a spiritual life without discipline. And I absolutely agree with that. And so the areas of spiritual discipline that I want to strengthen, not that I don't have them, but I do um, honor the fact that I need to be strengthened in these areas, is the ability to sit in silence and have that moment of solitude and really carving out times, um, you know, outside of working and being a mom and a wife and a preacher and all of that, really having time to just sit with God. Also fasting, um, prayer and stewardship is also a big, a big concept that I think um, has um, this class has helped me to really look at it in a different way um, and to really understand that I am a steward, that everything that I have from ministry to family, is, it doesn't belong to me, um, but that I am a manager of it, that I am chosen to be a steward of it. Um, and so I really want to um, strengthen that discipline. Also, stay in, um, I want to stay committed to my own emotional wellness as much as I am a proponent and a promoter of emotional um, health. 
um, and emotionally healthy spirituality, I have to, um, I have to model it. And so I want to always um, practice what I preach <laughs> and make sure that that's something that is a priority. It remains a priority that even when I'm busy, that I am, I am in tune with my own emotional needs and my, and my feelings and, and all of that stuff. Um, also treating others as humans rather than objects. This was another concept that hit very close to, to home for me. Um, this was discussed in um, leadership and self-deception as well as um, I believe our handouts on spiritual formation. Um, and so um, it's easy to, to think that we treat people well, um, but I have been guilty of not responding to the, the call of other people's humanity not you know spending time as a as a leader um, and getting to know people the way that I should, or not taking um, the moment to really again connect with people and, and kind of being rushing in relationship. And so I just want to slow that down a bit um, and really um, connect with people on a deeper level, especially those that I lead. And so that's something that I want to commit to and grow in, um, making sure that I stay out of the box of self deception that I am aware of, you know, that I all, am always self-aware and looking at what I'm doing um, as a leader and making sure that, you know, the germ of self-deception is not um, being spread throughout the church or throughout my, you know, what I'm doing um, and I'm not aware of it that is coming from me. So that's something that I commit to um, growing in and also finding my identity and who I am rather than what I do. Um, and then lastly, walking in authenticity and in truth. Um, and so just remaining true to my values, remaining true to who I am and what God has called me to do ultimately. And then the last chapter is my academic plan. Um, and like Abraham, this is my first class, um, but I am a planner by nature. So I kind of plan everything out with maps and graphs and all of that. And so um, my electives that I plan to take um, are really geared toward my areas of, 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 of passion and the things that I um, find take interest in and so I'll um, take a class in about um, women's empowerment um, one on servant leadership character and, and ethics and then one on transformational leadership um, because that's just something that I want to dig a little deeper in um, because ultimately I am a leader and in many components on my job in ministry kind of in every area I'm a leader and so leadership is a huge another huge piece for me um, I plan to um, have possibly do two overtures, um, one global and one in the U.S. So the global one, I'm looking at Nairobi, Kenya, and that'll be in 2020. Um, and that time just works better than doing it sooner. I had a plan to do the Manila overture, but that didn't quite work out um, with my life as a mommy and a wife. And so um, I'm really excited about the, the possibility of the Kenya um, overture. And then I want to do one um, locally uh, before I graduate, if possible. Um, and so I don't know that location yet, as it hasn't been set, um, set yet. And then um, research ideas. Again, I'm still playing with a lot of different ideas. Um, but one that, um, that really stuck with me based on my um, call with my PLC um, last week at Dr. Yvonne was really looking at emotional health awareness amongst African-American church leaders. And so um, I have to do the work of really drilling down and finding out the problem that I want to fix within that larger um, issue. Um, but that's kind of where I'm going. I'm, I'm pretty solid on that being the area. I just need to, to figure out um, exactly what I want to do, uh, what problem I want to, uh, to address within that. So that is it. I hope I didn't go too fast. <laughs> No, you did not go too fast at all. A very, a very um, thorough, well thought out presentation, Jill. Um, you seem to have covered the basis and you have quite a template here for your, your final project. Um, yes, and we know that um, going forward, you will you will prioritize those urgent places <laughs> where you want to address, and I do believe that you will be addressing them all. But we know for the purpose of our work here, you will be prioritizing that. 
Yes. Right, but um, excellent um, presentation, quite thorough. I think um, it was clear enough. I have no questions for you. Um, Dr. Dave? Excellent. I mean, gee, it was, it was really, really good. Um, I'm sitting here listening and watching, and your, your emphasis on emotional health and your depth of understanding of it um, is rather stunning, <laughs> if I could use that word. Um, in fact, I, have, I haven't heard or, or talked with many people that have such a, uh, I think, a deep understanding of wholeness. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where you got all that. I mean, obviously you said it's anointing of God, but I think you're, it'd be fascinating to hear how your hard times and your hardships have shaped you because there's a, there's a wisdom that I hear throughout your presentation um, that I think most leaders, church leaders, nonprofit leaders, business leaders don't understand um, emotional health like the way you discuss it right? Mm -hmm. So what, um, and you talk about the personal work that you need to do personally and the heart mm -hmm. work, right? So you have this, this, this understanding of, of emotional health and the, and the, and that you need to work on yourself. <laughs> so this is kind of a weird, um, <laughs> kind of a strange thing I'm going to say, okay. but when I, when I hear someone and meet someone like you that, that has wisdom has depth the concern i have is that people are going to place you on a pedestal hmm. and they're going to worship you and say i want to model my life after her yeah because she has it so together right mm -hmm. so i think so i so i so this kind of a strange thought I'm, I'm going through is how do you craft your calling when you're so together in so many, and you're not perfect, I'm not saying that no. at all. I mean, we all got no. our junk that we have to yeah. work, but yet you, you articulate so well. And I could see you as a phenomenal public speaker. And the, the danger is, again, people are gonna look to you and not to God, right? No, I, I absolutely agree with that, Dr. Dave. I think um, I specifically, well, with the help of God, you know, my yeah. ministry being called the gift of truth, and so I think with that is I'm always one who is a, who's very vulnerable and open and raw yeah, about yeah. my own stuff. Yep. And so I think people are able to relate, but they, but when they finish listening to me, <laughs> they really understand that, Oh, she got her junk too. You know, and so <laughs> in my paper, I wanted to make sure that I say, Hey, I'm dealing with father issues. You know, yeah, I'm dealing yeah. with seeing God after walking so strongly and being able to, to move you know, in, in various aspects of his glory and, and, and minister to people, I still have to deal with me. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm always conscious of, of, of being vulnerable in that regard, yeah. because yeah. I don't want people to see me as having all together. I want them yeah. to see us yeah. as us, as, as Dr. Yvonne said, that I'm helping them on this journey, yep. you know, and that we're yeah. doing it together. And so that's, that's what I try to do. But I, I do understand what you're saying, because I have dealt with that, where people yeah. are like, I just want you to how do you, how do I do this? How do I, I'm like, no, I'm not all together. Well, and that, and yeah, and that's, that's, that's beautiful because, because, and I, I think you just nailed it for me too, is that I think when, when God gives us the, a gift of leadership, mm -hmm. um, people do want to put us on those pedestals. And I think the key is what you just said. We need to continue to show our vulnerable side. Absolutely. And in church leadership and any kind of leadership, the, the leaders that we that we really deeply want to follow are those that show us their humanness, mm -hmm. and and so I would just really encourage you to stay on that track because, man, you got the total package. I mean, this is <laughs> this is powerful stuff, and you're going to be a yes. force. It it, and, it sure is. It yeah. sure is. And um, just on the whole point of the journey, the journey is symbiotic. Yeah. That. I am receiving as much as I'm giving. And I do know that my prideful self mm -hmm. have stood in the way of being ministered to mm -hmm. from persons who I have ministered to. Absolutely. It, and I know it, it was humbling. It is humbling to, to, to tear up in front of those who are always crying on your shoulder. 
because you are in your pain and you are on your journey, all right? Mm -hmm. and, and yes, it, is, it also requires wisdom to, di to discern who you can be vulnerable with mm -hmm. and who you can't, but not to deny your vulnerability before anybody, but just to know who you can late on and who is not ready to receive that, you know? I want to also commend the fact that your, your calling is recognizing that you need building. And that came out in Abraham's presentation as well. I have work to do. Mm -hmm right because that recognition is very important in how much we 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 create a plan that fits right so on the areas that you have much to do it's it's useful to think through what you will be doing to patch those and they become a part of your future academic plan or development plan Abraham, Florine, do you have feedback or commendations for Gia? Commendations, it's beautiful, it's brilliant. Yes. I thought very, very clear, Gia, very, very clear. And her assessment of her own strengths and her assessment of how she's going to project those strengths as she moves through, I thought was tremendous. Thank you, Florine. Agree with you, Florine. Abraham? Yeah, from my end, I think uh, Gia did a, a fabulous job. It's so clear, and um, the fact that um, she has uh, her ministry, her area of ministry well set out, she's very sure of it, and she knows exactly uh, what to do, how to develop in that area, is very commendable. Thank you, Abraham. And I want to ask you about your fellow groupies, Abraham. I haven't heard from them. They did not enlist their times, and I thought they would be present here tonight, and I haven't seen them. What were your plans? We actually had a, a group meeting, and um, we, we met, we exchanged our ideas on our various presentations. They have their presentations all well set out. I saw it. It's a very good presentation. So. I just sent them a, a note because uh, we all agreed that uh, we were meeting here tonight. I don't know why they are not here. I just hope uh, nothing went amiss because we discussed and uh, we exchanged the presentations. We gave ourselves uh, some suggestions. Yeah, I also sent a note. I wondered if they did not recognize there were two separate Zoom rooms. Um, I'm not, let me check my mail. Florine, I need you to get ready to begin. Um, let me just check my mail to see if I, I have nothing from them to suggest they're having difficulties. So. We, we agree we're going to be, we, we agree, we all agreed what we were going to be in this session. Okay, alrighty. Well, at least I know that they were aware because they had not actually placed their name, but I saw yours and assume you represented the group. Yes, so, I did, and I, and I mentioned it to them. Okay, alrighty. Thank you. Mention, uh, Dr. McKenzie, let me quickly mention that uh, for the PLC meeting later tonight, uh, uh, the email you sent did, didn't have the link. So, you it please does. You need to scroll down. But I will send the link alone. It has, Yvonne is inviting you to, and then it, it, if you scroll down, you see the link, you see um, telephone numbers and so on. But I will extract the link and send it to you separately. Yes, can you please do, because my PLC just sent me a note, because I just forwarded it to them and they complained of the same thing that they were not seeing the All link. All right, okay then. Uh, mm -hmm. Florine? Yes, Are you able okay. to share your PowerPoint? I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to see what I have to do. Yes, your PowerPoint should be on your desktop. Yes. And then you will um, see the green icon that says share. When you click on that, your desktop will be displayed. And you click on your PowerPoint so that we can see it. All right? 
Okay. At the bottom of your screen, I don't think you're using an iPad, you will see among the many icons there, you will see share, but do not begin to share until your PowerPoint is on your desktop. It is on the desktop. All right, so okay. now you click on the Zoom icon that says share. Okay, I've clicked it, I'm not seeing anything happen. When you click the icon that says share, do you see your desktop displayed? I do see the front slide. I see the first, I see the, I see it on, on the, on All right. Uh, uh, go back to your desktop. Go back to your desktop and make sure that your entire presentation is visible to you. Yes, All right. So make sure that your entire PowerPoint presentation is covering your desk, the, the, your your computer right now. Okay, yes. All right. Now come into the Zoom room and um, the icon and search for the icon at the bottom of the screen below your name and it has a green one that says share. It's almost in the center. Hmm. Are you seeing it? I've seen it and I've clicked on it, but nothing is happening. And when you click on it, what happens? I just see my thing going this. I just see a small box in mine. Click on it again. Maybe you need to enlarge your 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 Zoom screen. Go to the top and make it a full screen. Dr. Vaughn, is there a way to access it from your Dropbox for? Oh, yeah, that's probably something I could do. Uh, thanks. Uh, I didn't put it in Dropbox. You oh. didn't? No, I just put it on. Can you email it to me? Yes, I could. All right, email it to me. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Not to worry. I have a feeling that you have your Zoom, your Zoom icon um, very small. So when you're sharing, you're not seeing the entire stuff. Okay, just then. Okay. Imram, I've extracted the link and sent it to you. Okay, thank you, doctor. 
Uh, okay, here we go. I, I have it now with me, Florine. I will share shortly uh, once it's opened up. So I will move the slides for you. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. Um, I apologize to everyone that this is the first draft. Yes, you go straight ahead. Can you see it now? Is anyone seeing it? Yes, I can see it. Okay, beautiful. Florine, over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Yvonne. Um, please know this is the first draft. I still have a lot of work to do on it, but <coughs> it's there. As I, as I considered doing this part of it, I found that I definitely need to depend on knowing that God has chosen me and appointed me for fruit bearing. And so I've included that verse to begin with. Um, the books I plan to read, they're the books on the required reading. And there are a few others. One is The Courage to Teach. And um, I haven't read it yet, but it's The Courage to Teach. Power and Poverty, and I'm looking at Power and Poverty just the title grabs me because Guyana is technically the fourth poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. And friendship with the margins is because I acknowledge that unless I can build trust with people, what I want to do, I will never get done. Or what God wants me to do will never get done. I, I, I know that I have to depend on building relationships with others and getting to the point where they trust me and I trust them. Can we move on? Um, so it was difficult for me to encapsulate my calling and vision into points, but basically I'm saying that my early experiences taught me not to despise people and I'm thankful for that. I thought that I was going after university straight into a job in the laboratory, the bauxite company, and then realized I couldn't cope with the living condition standard. And then I was asked to teach chemistry at my old school. I have never done a job that I applied for. I've always been sent to do something and having gone to do it, I found, um, Lots and lots of fulfilling experiences. And so the, 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 what I do is just um, share with you how I move from one place to the next. Each job has given me an opportunity to see national needs from different perspectives. And um, whether it was bishops teaching the children or Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did something wrong there. Let me see what no, I did. Maybe, maybe I did something wrong. I, no. Okay. I have. Go ahead. No, it could be. You should be here. Yeah. Um, so that throughout my work experiences, there were many, many experiences that kept showing you the need to respond to people. And from those, I think I developed the thing of once I saw a need, I would help others, I would build programs, I would do things to help to help deal with that need. I'm a member of Inter a Global International, and through a Global, we were able to set up feeding programs in specific schools, um, and those programs help to keep children in school. Through a Global, we were able to set up supervision program to help children do homework before they go home. Because in some, in some areas of need, children don't have electricity at home, they don't have water, they don't have whatever. And so I think um, as I've 
looked at my life mapping, as I've looked at my journey, I think my calling is to help develop others so together we can develop those, we can address the needs. Um, and my focus is Guyana. We are blessed with minerals, we dress in this fertile land, tremendous climate. We are still the fourth poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. High crime, including suicide. At one time, we were the suicide capital of the world. High domestic violence and murder. High substance abuse. And high academic underachievement. And you can see this underachievement from little children. You go into schools and you can look at these children and realize that some of them are blank. Some of them are just there because they maybe have to be there. There are all sorts of things. Whether it's a poverty that's the backbone of it, I'm not sure. It could be. I'm still praying and asking God to show me what it is. But what keeps, my, what keeps me going is the fact that in 1990, there's a prophetic word that God will lift a curse of ignorance in there. And that keeps me going. Racial tensions can flare very quickly, and when they flare, it's not nice. We've, we've had lots of bloodshed with racial flares. So my present focus is to help parents accept the challenge of being their children's first teachers. Because if the parents take on that challenge, then the parents will teach the values, which right now are not being taught because the school can't teach the values. And if the parents don't take on that challenge of teaching the first, teaching the values, nobody teaches the values. And I think that's one reason why so many of our youngsters, particularly young boys, have gone into crime. We have 16 year olds, 15 year olds in, in the big time crime. And it really is very, very hard. They, they, I think the phones um, need a lot of strengthening, and I really like Abraham's thing of starting with the gospel and moving right through. I thought that's beautiful. My, okay, Yvonne, next slide. In communication, I'm saying there's need to reach out to parents and there's opportunity to reach out to parents and the school is very small so less than 40 children so you get to know all the parents and all the te all the teachers and even the people who are not the parents the aunties uncles grandparents everybody you get to know after a time then when i did the um transmission leadership course i started moving with the child protection board and so i've actually linked in and gone to visit and help at the maternity clinic in a place called Old Boys Town, a part of Georgetown. And in All Boys Town, there's, there's a lot of need in that clinic. You see um, a lot of mothers who have multiple children, sometimes with different fathers, you see people who can hardly afford to have the children, but somebody's encouraged them to go through the pregnancy. So there's, there's a lot that you see there and you realize that um, if you could relate to people and let them know that God loves them, then you begin. You, you, you're beginning to share something. And then um, last month, I became involved in the International Decade of People of African Descent um, Assembly, Guyana. So that word should be assembly, not assembly. And I'm a member of the Education Policy Subcommittee. I had, my brother was part of it from way back when it started. But I keep on saying that I'm not seeing what is happening in Guyana. I'm not seeing what is happening. Because when this decade was announced, because at that time, the underachievement among the blacks is much higher 
than the honor treatment among any other racial group. And Guyana is a land of six races. Um, can't explain that now, but Guyana is a land of six races. The under treatment among the blacks is so much more pronounced that you were excited when the UN announced this decade and you saw it as something that would blossom out and will but four years have passed and nothing really has happened that you can say well this has happened or this has happened. Yeah, I got involved in that recently and I'm working on the education policy subcommittee. The subcommittee itself has not met. All we've done is we've sort of been given our charge. But I'm looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to that as a means of learning and as a means of helping to get my own personal message across. Um, and I think we'll be working first with the original villages that were bought by the ex -race. So I'm putting it down out as communication. It's something still to happen and still to be clarified. Thank you, Yvonne. Can we go to the next slide? Current ministry. I co-founded Dominion School 17 years ago, and it was in direct response to the prophecy and to give children of low-income families a sound and basic education. It's a Christian school, and so we keep on pushing for Christian values. We we're very thankful for the mix of children we've had over the years. We've had children with all sorts of problems. And we're thankful that we have been able to systematically say to children, you're made in God's image. God loves you. God wants you to know that you belong to him because he's made you in his image. Uh, we know that there's a lot that we have to do, but we're thankful that that's where it is. Relationships. I am related to five, in five different situations. One is a group international, one's my local church, one is my SIDCF that I sort of came up in and I'm still have links with. One is Campus Crusade for Christ, um, where I help support people, so I have a contact there. And the other is Child Evangelism Fellowship, where again, I've always had contacts to contact. I am hoping that through these relationships, I will um, better be able to communicate the, the nuances of relating to parents in their myriad situations. I, I, I know that because of the, the cultural mix we have in Guyana, it's not a one one intervention that will fit everybody. And so I'm depending on different groups to allow me to, to help me get the message, to help me get the strategy for sharing, and to help me get the clarity of what the community needs. Because I think different communities have different um, ways of approach. And this is what I am basically hoping that I can get through. Thank you, Dr. Yvonne. I think my, my greatest obstacle in um, spiritual formation, my greatest thing is that I can be pushed into focusing on myself. At my age, I should leave this to younger people. And so what, what tends is I, I start looking at myself. I see my needs. I see my problems. I see my limitations. And I realize that unless I keep strong faith in God, then I won't do anything. Recently, um, we, well, recently, she's a leader, started a small prayer group. 
about six of us, maybe encourage each other. But we definitely, I definitely need to be encouraged to believe God in spite of my personal limitations. And the focus, people just throw me onto my focus. You know, so you say something's wrong with your health. That's why we say you shouldn't. And I, I think that I, I need to um, really focus on God's grace all the time. And depending on God's grace all the time, all the time, not easy sometimes. Um, academic plan to complete the DPL uh, is a lot of work to catch up, with a lot of work to read, it's a lot of work to do. What I found is that in every single course, I've been stretched in my need for my own personal transformation. In every single course, I've been stretched in my need to focus on God and the fact that once he's given a promise, he will keep it. I need to focus on God's wisdom and God's strength that has kept me so far. And because it has kept me so far, I'm believing that he'll tell me to the end. But it's not that I, it's not that I feel that I have what it takes to get to the end, that I'm going to get to the end. And so I, I need to do the last, last three courses, the project methodology course, and the two dissertation courses. Thanks for listening. Florine, thank you for sharing. You know, I am thinking, and I'm, as I look at your presentation, and I'm feeling worthless. I just had this sense of worthlessness because I looked at all the IVCF, ICF, a glow, and all this long list of the various things for which you're interconnected. And I'm saying, wow. God's grace is truly flowing through and taking you through. And I will want to be cheering you on with a lot of enthusiasm. And I implore you to move in his pace and with his grace and to continue to impact your world. A, a great impact that you are, which is not by design. It's just what comes without you saying anything, that you have not focused on any limitation that would, you, would prevent you from being, but you continue to be useful, be extremely useful, allow yourself to be used and that is a tremendous lesson for me i retired many years ago and was forced back into um, active service because i wanted to take myself out of the corporate world out of active service and when I look at people like you who say, I cannot hang up my hat because there is much to do, I learn and I feel a bit ashamed at even the thought that I wanted to pull away. Um, coming back now to your actual presentation, you carefully covered the areas. I don't have questions, you were clear. And I feel you do have a template to write your story to the end. Um, 
it will be a matter of what your specific focus will be. You're struggling with poverty. You're looking at the young children. And I have seen that project with my own eyes and I'm so moved by what you do with so little. Um, I think that God will bless you and bless this ministry, whichever way you take it tremendously. Dave, what are your thoughts? I echo what you said, Yvonne. It is a privilege to sit here, Florine, and, and listen to your life journey. One of my uh, now passed on mentors used to say that we don't retire, we redeploy. <laughs> And he retired from InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, and he, he passed away um, about 10 years ago. But right up until the very end, um, he's just been this model, as you are, that with every breath, we, we still walk with God, and he works through us. So I, I just say bless you and thank you. And, um, you know, you're, you're obviously a model of, the thinking that we, in stages of life, we become mentors and sages. And the one quote I wrote down that said, um, you want to help parents to become their first teachers of children, which goes right along with what you said earlier, that your heart is to develop people. Because you realize that's how the kingdom is multiplied as you pour your life into others. And you have a lifetime of wisdom. You have a lifetime of experience that is so rich. And I just so much appreciate you willing to share that. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jane. Jane, Abraham, do you have anything to add to that? I don't have anything. I'm sorry, I'm in, in bath time. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I think it's well said and also very clear. And just like you said, it's um, quite encouraging that uh, she's not allowing age to slow her down. That's very, very encouraging. Thank you, Florine, and every blessing. I see we have found our missing or just one of Osigon and Tammy. Oh, I, I, we will hear their story as to why they're just coming in. But um, <laughs> you look like one of those guys who went playing marbles and did not realize time had gone. <laughs> but um, get your get your your PowerPoint up. And get ready to ramble. Well, I'm sorry, I I I slept off unusually, honestly. <laughs> Abraham Abraham came to rescue and called me, and you know. Oh, I, so I, my my note would not do a thing. I didn't I didn't see the note. And honestly. I have to forgive you for sleeping because you've been so faithful in all the classes during the late nights. I'm sorry. Yeah, but no, I'm sorry for coming this year. I actually gave a 10 a.m. and I thought that all the Africans and the Europeans would be on the 10 a.m. You oh, all okay. didn't take it. No, we, we chose um we chose 5 p.m. Why did you not choose 10 a.m. because that would be good time for you. 10 a.m. would be 3 p.m. for me and I'm with TV at work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was trying. I just did. <laughs> Over Thank to you, you now. Um, so you will get your PowerPoint up on your screen. Make sure it's on your desktop. And then you select the share button on the Zoom. Okay. Um, All right. And then once you select the share button, you will see your screen. So you will select your PowerPoint. Okay. Um, give me a second, please. Mm -hmm. 
Tommy, let me do a voice check on you. Can I hear you? Tommy? Tommy, there's no mic. Try, I'm, I'm presently. Okay. Um, I will. I will do that now. I'm trying to. Um, I will have to go go from my tablet. Okay. If, and if then not, my laptop. You can. Okay. You can email me the PowerPoint if you want to. No, I'll. I'll use this. Okay. Good. Um, Tammy, I noticed that I'm not seeing a mic for you. Oh, right to go, you're ready to go. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, sorry once again, you know, those stuff. And, uh, <laughs> thank God for Abraham and thank you, Abraham. So this is uh, chapter one is uh, for book reports and where well, the required books are here. I've, I've chosen a set of books, about 10 of them, um, to the required books. I, I was thinking it would be two because they were filling the slides. So that's why I didn't include them here. Um, chapter two, um, we detailed the ways in which I was able to design my calling as a teacher and, and you know, several other abilities and to also involve my body uh, for accurate foresight for young people as they determine to take their crucial decision for their career path. And I will also be examining the impact of my five H's on my calling and spiritual development. And I'll also be sharing my giftedness uh, exercise result in chapter two. Um, chapter three is about communication, and this chapter we explore my current sphere of influence and focus on where God is leading me um, to expand the expander influence. I will also be de de developing a framework and curriculum for Impact Academy, like I shared earlier. I think um, that was week six, a mentoring program um, where I established professionals and businessmen we mentor and coach young people as they make very important um, decisions in their lives. So the curriculum will be a dynamic one that will be tailored to meet recent developments and challenges faced by upcoming, upcoming um, young professionals. Chapter four is uh, about uh, current ministry. My current ministry is teaching. I'm teaching at the moment, and I'm, I also run a small retail business. And I've been able to encourage young people to do business on an available scale and embrace uh, basic ethics of uh, doing business. Um, I'm currently taking a uh, substitute teaching job here in Manchester, and uh, I'm expected to get a QTS. Despite the fact, I think I've said that several times. So the present job is rather a temporary one, and I may likely be considering a career detour soon while I'm here in England. Um, I will also be actively involved in the, the RAP program with uh, Dr. Overman. I RAP program is. Uh, it's a program that enables Christian schools to integrate theology of work into government approved curriculum in a systematic manner. I've gone through the program with him in our school back in Nigeria, 
and then um, he has introduced me to um, what's called Christian School Trust here in England, and I've been in touch with them. Christian School Trust is a um, it's like an association of Christian schools in England. And I've been in touch with the organization and they are considering embracing RAP. Um, Christian Oberman has been here with Christian School Trust. He has done some work with them previously and uh, they're looking forward to see how that works. But in the interim, I will be coaching a school uh, back in Joss, Nigeria um, on RAP. And that may be part of my independent study. Uh, chapter five, I'm graced to be working with Dr. Christian Overman on RAP program, and he has been of immense blessing. Uh, first of all, shaping my approach to biblical worldview in education, especially for primary and secondary school. My interaction with him has trained me to be a RAP coach. I'll be making an arrangement to coach a school or two in Nigeria via learning arrangement. I'm also, I think, I think I've said this ahead of time for the slide. And then, uh, uh, obviously, the Center for Transformational Leadership, funded by my pastor, Dr. Dr. Red JVG, alumni, is also a massive platform in which uh, the Impact Academy will run. Uh, so, uh, I think, oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I think I'm sharing um, a slide that is not uh, fully updated. Let me stop this and bring up the most recent one. Excuse me, please. Sorry. Problem, Sagoon. It, 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 yeah, you're, 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 pausing, you're pausing for dramatic effect. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I'm just, it's, uh, okay. Oh my. Okay. Updated. Updated, yeah. Sorry. So I think this is the updated one. I think I was here. Uh, spiritual formation, as I noted, um, during which is my unique style of flesh is controller with drum, which is described as the basement man, always in the workshop or the office. Um, I will work with friends and mentors to help me improve on this. I well, most most time find it uh, found it difficult to not have something you know being done at a particular point in time, which uh, which which is described as workaholic sometimes. And um, fortunately, I just finished reading uh, "Making All Things New," and. Um, it's 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 quite uh, you know, an exposure to me of the way you know one thinks about work. So I will also take um, concrete steps as as prescribed in some of the required reading, and then um, I will I will engage in effective accountability, which I feel is going to be of immense help um, as I trust God to my proper uh, formation spiritual formation plan. 
um, chapter seven, academic plan. After this course, I'm going to have uh, 20 credits you need to go. Uh, my plans are to do an independent study with uh, Dr. Overman, which is uh, four credits. I think the dissertation one and two it will be eight credits. The research breach is going to be four. And then I may likely take mentoring guides for the journey. And I think that's, that's basically for young people. And I think special emphasis for boys. Um, when I saw the description, it makes a lot of sense to me as um, grace to be raising two boys. So, and then a lot of other boys, you know, that I'm relating, I have, I have, I have you know, a system relationship with back in Nigeria and even in the schools and the church where I attend right now. I think that that's about it. I will have advantages such as my gift assessment results, my PLC storytelling feedback, the live map that we share, and then we likely take the PMI map as well. Uh, that's about it. Sorry for being uh, a little bit uh, scruffy. Sigun, you're through? Yes, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask Dr. Dave to, to comment on your, your presentation first, and then uh, we will ask your fellow classmates for feedback as well. Sigun, first of all, I didn't realize how much you and I have in common. Um, mm -hmm. Your your heart for young people and helping them find their career paths is something that is is my life passion. You know, helping them understand um, just how they're uniquely created and gifted, and then steering them into help, helping them find that purpose. Doctor uh, Christian Oberman and I actually took our one of the first BGU classes together back. Uh, the Theology of Work class in Washington, D.C. in 2010. Wow. Uh, so, great man. I, I support his ministry. I love what he's doing. Mm. Um, it's, it's exactly in line with, with what you and I both are passionate about. I, I also appreciate um, your focus on mentoring and the fact that you're a teacher and you have a retail business and you want to recruit business leaders and professionals to mentor. One thought that, that I wanted to share that's worked really, really well for me in, in helping young people is job shadowing experiences. Mm -hmm. And when you recruit those, those professionals and business people, um, I've, my experience has been sometimes they're reluctant because like, oh, what are you asking me to do? It's such a, it's such a big commitment. But when you tell them or ask them, just allow a student to spend a day with you job shadowing, um, it's been very, very impactful for the youth. Mm -hmm. And many of, these, many of these mentors and business people welcome the, the, the young people back because um, they start to build relationships. And often that opens up a network for those, uh, for those, chill, for those young people to, to find their career paths. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, but um, I can also relate to being very active, uh, workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> you use that term. Um, I am that way too. And it's been part of my spiritual formation that God has had to work on me to um, slow down, pull back, mm. and um, not be such an activist. But at the same time, that's how he wired me to be very, very active. Mm. Um, so on so many ways, I resonate. And I so appreciate your presentation. You're mm. very articulate. Um, you have clear direction. Um, you are in touch with what uh, lies ahead with you. You've got great people in Dr. Overman to help guide you and, and mentor you. Um, please stay in touch. I would, I would love to see what you do and how God uses you with, through this because this is very much, like I said, how, how, I am, how I'm, I'm feel called to run the second half of my life as well. So just bless you, brother. This is great stuff. 
All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, like I wrote in my last week discussion, when I watched the video of what you were doing with, uh, I think, Craftsman, Craftsman Character Course, yep. um, it really, really brought a lot of clarity, you know, to uh, what I was thinking about. You know, when I had the meeting with uh, my PLC, with uh, Dr. Yvonne last week, and were able to steer many things that I'm thinking about, um, it's... It it gave me a lot of clear direction rather than doing so many things in several places. I see that my previous work and my passion, you know, is getting is being narrowed down now. You know, work with young people, teach them, and that course, you know, which I'm going to ask you for much details about how you, I mean, your discovery actually gave me confidence and you know, lot of direction. Yeah. Well, and thank you for that because, and if I can be of any assistance moving forward. Um, some of the hard lessons or good lessons I've learned. Um, and I can learn from you because I think our, our culture and our world is changing so much and it's a global crisis. Mm. You know, even talking to, you know, so many people, we all recognize the young people, uh, the earlier presentations with Jamaica, um, they're talking about the, the young men who cannot find their sense of purpose. Mm. And, and so this is a, a it's not just, the U.S. or the West, it's global. So mm. I think the more of us can help that, the more of us understand that the workplace is the primary place of spiritual formation, as mm. Eugene Peterson says, it's the place where we find that sense of purpose. Mm. And more of us need to be having that, that conversation with the business community to help them understand that. Because mm. our, our businesses will not survive <laughs> if we do not have quality young people coming in to take our places. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I say all that just to say I'm I'm behind you and and please stay in touch and if I can do anything to help, let me know. All right, thank you very much. I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Your classmates, Sigun, are there any comments, thoughts, encouragement for Sigun? This is Gia. I just wanna. Um, just commend uh, to gun on his his passion for young people. Um, I, every time I read his, you know, post um, and hear about his journey and what he wants to do, I just think it's amazing to see a man, you know, a man who really wants to give back to youth. Um, anyone who wants to give back to youth, but specifically a man. So I just want to commend him for doing that because I know it's not easy. Um, but the mentorship and helping them find their calling and their purpose, I think, is really phenomenal. So. Way to go. Thank you very much, Gia. Thank you. Okay, Sigun, um, I, <laughs> I am thinking about um, the basement man. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the basement man. But you know you're 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 with me for the second time, yes. and I see such humility, such composure, and you know I'm going to understand the grit, the strength, the determination that I know comes with how how we're formed, how we're wired our journey, um, the difficulty, the fact that you become the man who takes nothing for granted. And, um, and greatness is in the basement, which is a beautiful way of keeping the lid on things. But also, a way of hiding behind something, right? <laughs> and so you will determine mm. when you're hiding and you will determine when you just need tranquility in the basement to focus. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Right? And um, Yvonne, are you speaking to me or to Sabine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Um, Dr. Dave, <laughs> I have a feeling that, that you have emerged <laughs> and you do peep out of the basement sometimes. And I think 
um, David, even being with me these nine weeks, I know you've peaked out of the basement. You're not down there now at all. But I really <laughs> like the basement. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. And it's a place to hide sometimes. It is. And it's a place to go easy on yourself sometimes. And mm -hmm. coming out of the basement means dressing I, I, I think I am... I, I am choosing the basement because I'm running away and secluding. Um, but I know that I can't do what I'm called to do in the basement all the time. Mm. Right? Mm. Um, I, I just have led the public life for so long. I no want to retreat. Um, you have led Sigun, the basement life for so long, there might be a time and a calling when you are going to not be allowed to stay down there unless the entire community moves in with you. <laughs> right? Um, because I do picture your empowering these young men and women who otherwise have not seen a way to move through being productive, valued, mm. and achievers mm. in their world of work mm. while still self-actualizing their academic and their mental ability, right? That's true. Right, and you're going to be journeying with a lot of people. And um, if you sit in the basement, you won't be sitting there alone. Mm. Mm. So get ready to find intrusive mm. um, this happening on your space, mm. and still find time like Jesus to get away and be alone and be mm. filled by the Father. Mm. But I really. Um, I, I, I see powerful things happening Amen. and you. I am praying you strength to do just that mm. and you can't have a better mentor so that invitation you have yeah. received and that offer that you have had made to you mm. go for it thank you so much I will go for it go for it go yeah. for it thank you so much all righty I know Tammy is having some difficulty. Tammy, can you type me something now? Your microphone is refusing to work and you're frustrated. Never mind, it happens occasionally. It happens to, to us at times. Unfortunately, I do not have a um, free call number that you could call from. Um, that it won't cost you from your country. Uh, I am trying to see what workaround I could have for you. Um, I tell you what, Tammy, we're having our final um, group meeting next week. It's a very informal session where you will speak into my spirit. You will tell me how we can improve the course. You will tell me what we could have done better and you will encourage each other. That's all we're meeting for, very free flowing. You can wear your jeans and t-shirt. <laughs> it's a very, um, so in that session next week, I will give you some time to make sure that your mic is working, that you're ready, and we will take your presentation. So tell me if you're hearing me say yes in the chat. Well, if you're not hearing, I think Abram will, will, will call you and tell you or something, right, Abram? Tammy? All right, you're gonna communicate that to Tammy for me. Um, okay. if, 
Okay. Um, I don't know what's uh, tell me. Okay, I will try and call him again. I don't. Know. Right. Um, he's here, but he's having problem with his mic. Right. He's here. He's just having problem with his mic. So you will tell him that next week we will let him do his presentation um, in our wrap up session. All right. And you look like you're frozen now, Abraham. But Dave, would you mind taking us out this evening? And thank you again. I cannot thank you enough. I know I sound like a record that is scratched, but I so value your company. Thank you so much. I value what you've poured into our students. And I really hope you have no plans of going away from this course soon. Well, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure. And it's, it's funny too, I need to share a quick story. Um, yesterday work was absolutely insane. And I thought, Lord, how am I gonna be freed up for four hours today to, to <laughs> sit in with Yvonne? And plus I had two other conference calls I needed to take and the Lord just calmed everything down and uh, he made a way which just affirms that I'm supposed to be here. And I learned so much and I get encouraged Tammy, I look forward to hearing your presentation. I know it's frustrating, um, but please hang in there. I, I really look forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, we can see you now, but still no mic. So um, don't be too discouraged because it, it will all work out. Um, but yes, please, please let's, I'll, I'll, let, me, let me just just thank the Lord and, and uh, end this night and uh, we'll look forward to next week. So please join me. Father, just thank you again, um, just the way you're working in so many different lives and so many different places, and it is a privilege to sit in and be a part of these leaders um, of all different ages, of all different places in the world, and it is so encouraging because we see your hand so evident and so powerfully in so many lives, and the journey's not over. We, we have so much to do. Your, your work is never done and our work is never done. Uh, and we only want to do what, what you would have us do. Work when we, you would have us work. Rest when you would have us work. And continue to grow deeply in our relationship with you so we can be not only vessels, useful vessels in the world, but as Gia said earlier, just your daughters and sons that know what it is just to, to sit on your lap and to be loved and and uh, just fulfilling our, our unique unique creativity um, that you've made us to be. So with all that said, Father, I just praise you and I thank you and uh, I just delight in what you're doing and, and delight in this group of people that you've brought together tonight. And thank you for the bonds, thank you for the encouragement and uh, just help us to go forward and, and continue to serve you and know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you all, guys. I am really very proud of you. Um, I really feel that we can just ordain you to your various ministries. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that because this is also a time when we pray you through and trust that your work will um, really go forth as kingdom work, mm. right? So thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Florian, you see you made it, you came through. And um, we're proud of you and we are rooting for you as well. Um, you're special among us. And you, I know you don't want to be special, but you're special among us. Tammy, I noticed I spelled your name with a common T and I was feeling very badly until I see that you did just the same. So I am forgiven. Bless you all. And um, we do that wrap up next week when we just listen to you, very informal, just a way of making sure we understand your takeaways and make sure we know what we could do better. So it is going to be a very short time together, and we're looking forward to all of you being present. 
Alrighty. Alrighty. Bye. 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 Sigun and Abraham, do you have Robert Rush in your session? Put out the game, please. Do you have Robert Rush in your session? No, we don't. Um, it's not in our group. Oh, and oh, you I no. No, uh, no. It, it didn't turn up to the group meetings at all. Okay. No, it's in our group. No, it's not, it's not in our group. I think it's in our group. Okay. Did he come to, did he make any contact? No. Okay. Thank you. I'm just trying to make contact with him as well. I'm not getting responses. So I just wanted to know. Okay. Bless you all. Bless you. Bye. 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 Yeah.